What's going on everybody? Welcome back to yet another video on the channel. My name is Dan and or X2Shoes and in today's video we're going to be talking about Twitch scams, pyramid schemes, follow for follow, support for support, all that stuff. How to identify it, how to completely avoid it and how to maybe realize if you yourself are already a part of one of these schemes and don't know about it. Obviously these support for support communities and schemes and all that stuff have been around since the early days of Twitch. However, lately I've just noticed it being worse than ever. It's something I really feel strongly about and I want to talk to you all about it today because it's just getting bad. Also, a bit of a more relaxed video today. Uh, as you can see, I've got the headphones on and this mic out, mainly because I've already recorded this video, but I left my reverb setting on and recorded for 45 minutes and sent it to the editor with like booming reverb on it. So good job, Dan. Everyone, this is a reminder to check your OBS settings before you record a video or go live. So obviously these support for support communities and all that, they're terrible for Twitch streamers, but you know what's great for Twitch streamers? Owned Pro, the lovely sponsor of today's video. Own Pro is an amazing plugin for OBS that lets you customize and change anything in your OBS on the fly without ever having to leave OBS. If you want a fantastically easy way to manage your alerts, cam borders, screens, transitions, music, you can do all that using Own Pro right inside of OBS. The reason I love something like Own Pro is that when you're streaming for long enough and you have all of these browser sources listed inside your scenes and sources that you don't know what half of them even are anymore, Own Pro completely stops all that and allows you to manage everything very, very easily. And they've actually recently partnered with Epidemic Sound, meaning that if you sign up to an Own Pro subscription, not only do you get all these amazing designs and bundles that are easy to use and look great, you also get an Epidemic Sound subscription as well. Own Pro is super affordable. I highly recommend giving it a whirl if you've never tried it before. And if you would like to give it a try, please do follow the link in the description. Yes, that link, that's the important link so that the sponsor knows that I'm good, okay? I'm cool. And you can also use code X2Shoes at checkout for a beautiful, 50% discount. Huge thanks to Own Pro again for continuously supporting us here on the channel and being great and providing beautiful products for streamers. All right, now that we've that out of the way, let's talk about schemes and scams and, and I'm doing things with my hands again and I, I don't know why, but just let's just go with it. Almost inevitably, whenever you hear the words schemes or scams on Twitch, you will almost 100% of the time hear the words follow for follow or support for support thrown in there too. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain to most of you what follow for follow or support for support is, but just for the uninitiated of you all, here's a TLD orb how it works. So typically with support for support, you will have a streamer. That streamer will go on the internet and start their stream, but they will generally make a statement such as, hi, I am a streamer. And if you support me by watching my stream, I will further support you by watching your stream. The person that has that said to them is like, awesome. All I have to do is watch this person's stream and then they'll watch my stream, hence adding a number to my view count. Or typically person A will say, hey, you're a streamer too. No way, I'm a streamer too. You always hear this idea of no way, you're a streamer, I'm a streamer. Yeah, there's only 8.6 million of us. But anyway, they'll say, oh, I'm a streamer. If you follow my channel, I will then go and follow your channel. This creates a cycle of people only watching your stream, not because they actually care about you or give a shit about your content or enjoy you as a streamer, only simply because they want something themselves and they've agreed to it. This is a problem because, you know, like it's so fake, right? People don't know who you are. They don't even know if they enjoy you as a content creator or share similar values to you. They just want something themselves and they see this as an easy, low effort way to get it. Now, naturally you end up kind of doing support for support or follow for follow with your friends anyway. Maybe they're IRL friends or people you've met from games and you just want to support them, right? You want to just hang out in their stream and you're doing it because they're your friend. But where this support for support or this follow for follow becomes a problem is when it's brought into a community. But a little bit more on that later. See, the thing is, when you are a new streamer, you are a tiny fish in an absolutely giant gargantuan ocean. You want to do literally everything and anything you can in those early days to get people watching your stream and clicking your link because, you know, you don't want to stream to zero people. Nobody does. And the problem with this is not everybody who's new to Twitch understands necessarily the long-term goal of their stream or the grander scope of Twitch. They just want to get live, get viewers, get to stream and get to making friends and having some fun. So without any sort of marketing strategy or content plan, a lot of these new streamers end up taking to places they know, like Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, and they come across these kind of communities, these Twitter pages that will retweet your link, these Facebook groups that are kind of branded as supporting small streamers, Reddit threads, you name it. And I swear there are so many more of these communities popping up lately, it's actually scary. As a new streamer, you look at that and you say, wow, an entire group of people with like hundreds of members that will just watch my content simply because I post in this group, I'm a member or I watch a couple of their streams. 
cool. That sounds amazing. And especially on Twitter, these are kind of like pages with thousands of followers who will retweet your stream if you tag them, or they'll put out these real engagement farming tweets of like, we want to follow some new streamers to watch today. Drop your link below. And you've got like 500 replies of people all spamming their link and spamming their content. And naturally in the replies of those tweets, you'll have someone who's really trying to make a name for themselves and being really enthusiastic about this whole community, being like, hey, just followed you, pal. And that person's like, oh, cool. I followed you back, dude. So you have follow for follow and support for support happening in these replies replies as well. All under the banner of this one page that is promoting this idea of like, we gotta grow together. We gotta grow as one. Like we're small streamers, we gotta stick together. We gotta support one another, guys. But I'm calling bull. <laughs> most of the time, the people who run these pages don't care about you or your content or the community's content. It's most likely owned by somebody who's trying to get those views or has an agenda for themselves. But as I mentioned earlier, streamers get suckered into this idea because they don't understand what's actually required yet to make it on the platform. Platform, but they see this as an easy way to put out their message and gain a lot of benefits without actually having to do a lot of the work required. And all of these communities and pages will promise you the world. You'll see all these keywords thrown around like community, together, support, growth, engaging. All of these terms and phrases that get people hook, line and sinker into their community and engaging with their posts and their network. And people get pulled into these pages because they think that everyone who's a member of these pages share that exact same mentality of growth, support, networking, all that stuff. And let's be honest, there's people in these communities who desperately want it to work and love the idea of what they're pushing. And they're trying to ingrain themselves into the community and they probably will swing by your stream a few times. But these kind of diamond in the rough people in these communities, I question the longevity of them there because inevitably they're gonna realize that the community is not working for them and they will leave and they will never come back. And trust me, it does not work. And most people who are in these communities, after about two or three months, gain enough experience on the platform to realize, oh yeah, this has been a complete and utter waste of my time, and they bail. The only thing that these communities are actually good for, and I use the word good loosely, I'm saying the only benefit that you will get from joining one of these communities is you will artificially inflate your follower count up to that 50 followers required for affiliate. And you may actually hit affiliate pretty quickly from joining one of these pages. But people seem to have this like air of mysticism around gaining affiliate. And don't get me wrong, it's a pretty cool achievement and a pretty cool goal to tick off your list, right? But people seem to think that just because they speed run affiliate and they get that 50 followers, and they get the average three viewers, which let's be honest, isn't the hardest thing in the world to do. Becoming a Twitch affiliate is not all that difficult when you think about it, different for everybody. But people seem to think that when you hit affiliate, you somehow overnight will gain hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of views and like it's this insane thing. But speed running this whole achievement is a bit of a waste of time because you're, yes, you're inflating your follower count up to 50 completely artificially through these pages, yet you're not gaining any of the actual organic viewers that will stick around once you become an affiliate. Sure, all these people will follow you, these 50 people will follow you, or 100, let's say, but not all of them are gonna subscribe to you. Probably none of them will subscribe to you. So I don't understand rushing this achievement. It, it means nothing. Sure, it gives you the ability to monetize your platform. But what's the point if none of these viewers actually care about your content enough to support you financially anyway? It's a complete waste of time speedrunning it. So moving on, the thing about these pages, these Twitter pages, these Reddit pages, Facebook pages, whatever. Yeah, they're a complete waste of time and they're kind of dumb and they don't really serve any purpose in my opinion outside of gaining you 50 followers overnight. However, a lot of the time they're not inherently sinister. There's not some sort of overlord puppet master a lot of the time pulling the strings and you know, being an asshole to all the people in this community. Sure, there's probably one or two bigger creators that for whatever reason are still in this community that are, you know, probably leeching a lot of the, these kind of young impressional streamers. But a lot of the time they're not inherently sinister. But where it does become sinister and is the reason I'm making this video because it's being talked about a lot lately is when you start to get into the stream team pyramid scheme. Now I've talked about these before, but I think lately it's a lot more prevalent in the streaming community. So I kind of wanted to talk about it again. Maybe raise some more awareness around these silly, silly things. So it's not gonna take a genius to understand why I'm making this video. Uh, if you're clued into the small streamer space, you've probably seen a lot of the drama and you know tweets and stuff going on on like small streamer Twitter. However, I am not in the business of naming names or getting involved in dramas or involving myself kind of in personal situations in other communities. So I'm not gonna talk specifically about any kind of one person or one community. So I just plan on highlighting the issue kind of as a whole. So yeah, that's a bit of a disclaimer. I'm just gonna be talking about kind of general things to be aware of in this kind of space, I suppose. So the stream team. So similarly to Facebook, 
Facebook and similarly to Twitter and all that kind of stuff, you have the people promising you the world. You also have the people promising you the world in the form of a stream team. For those of you that don't know, a stream team is a collective of streamers or a collaboration of streamers, typically either an esports org, a group of friends, ran by one or two or sometimes a handful of people. Or sometimes one person. You have to be a Twitch partner to make a stream team. And once you make it, you can invite whoever you want to be a part of it. If you're a part of one, it will show up on your stream next to your name. And when you click on that team name, it shows you all the people inside that stream team, who's live, who's not, and who's a member of it. It might say myth and then member of like TSM beside it or something like that. But a lot of these communities are just run by, you know, standard streamers who've decided to make them. And like our silly Facebook pages and Reddit pages and Twitter pages, they will promise you the world a lot of the time. However, some of them will take a lot more than they try to give. So these sketchy communities, what do they look like? Typically, there'll be one Twitch partner at the very top. Somebody with the most viewers, most followers, all that kind of stuff. Maybe another two or three in, in it as well, but typically it's one person. And what they typically will do is invite people into the stream team with the promise of, you know, raids, support, community, all that stuff, there's that word again, community and support, and kind of unite everyone under this one banner of we're all working together, we're all growing together, and we're all on this journey together. And these communities sometimes are absolutely massive. There could be hundreds of streamers in it, but it's all leading back to this one person at the top. This one person who's developed this team or owns this team, who they've now housed all of these hundreds at times, smaller streamers, all kind of sucking up to this one person at the top. And a lot of the time, if you're in one of these teams, you'll be told like, hey, you should recruit people. You know, if you recruit people, that gives you an extra entry into our giveaway this month, or it moves you up the ranks of being raided. All of this kind of behavior that's playing on the emotions of smaller streamers who at this point, as we've mentioned, are desperate to do anything to get their name out there. So basically you join this, these teams and you're being promised the world. You know, it's the idea of the more people who are being recruited into this team, basically the more reach and the more eyes we have on the one stream. When this one stream at the top decides to raid, it's going to be huge for the person who receives it. So hundreds of these people are hanging on into this stream team, thinking that when number one person at the top ends their stream, they are gonna get raided with potentially a couple of hundred of viewers. And then naturally all these people are hanging on for this person at the top and they are all engaging in support for support with one another as well because they're thinking like, oh, okay, well, you know, I only have two viewers, but the person above me has eight viewers. Like I'm gonna try and get in with them because again, I don't give a <coughs> about who they are or their content, but they have eight viewers. And maybe if I like suck up to them or I'm nice to them, I'll get that raid. But and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everybody in these communities are inherently like not genuine people. Like, yeah, they might actually be cool, but what these community oftentimes foster is that attitude of just like, I'm here because I want that. Not because I care about you all, I just want that. And as I said, small streamers who are desperate to do anything to make their channel grow, anything to get their name out there, they will engage in that fake behavior, that fake engagement, that support for support. They don't care what you do, they just want what you have to offer. The whole system is based on, you know, all competing for the person at the top's attention or the person below who's live simply because they're being promised growth, they're being promised raids. But there's a lot of the time, there's hundreds of people in these communities who are all pulling more people in, who all have the ability to recruit more people in, are hence creating this never ending loop of follow for follow. You know, I know me as a new streamer, if I was brought into one of these teams, the first thing I would do is try to be like, all right, there's hundreds of people in here. I got to start, you know, figuring out how I'm going to be recognizable. I would follow everybody. I would hop in their streams. Yeah, maybe I'll cheer some bits for somebody or something like that, you know, because I'm just trying to do anything to get my name out there, make it recognizable in the team so that I will eventually benefit. And that's what everyone else in these communities is doing. And when there's that many people in one of these stream teams, you cannot inherently enjoy everybody on that team. There's most likely gonna be people on this team whose content you don't like, whose ideas you don't like, whose morals or the way they talk to their chat or the way they talk about certain things you don't like. You're not vetting this team. You're not understanding whether or not you share values of the people in this team. It's like me, like, you know, I'm a variety streamer. I play lots of different games, everything from like cutesy relaxing games to Elden Ring, you know? I never play games like FIFA. I'm not going to join a stream team full of FIFA streamers or people who like FIFA because I'll probably have nothing in common with them. And if they did share their audience, with me, their audience probably wouldn't like my content because it's not the same as everyone else's in the team. Even if you wanted to, you could not personally vet all four or 500 people in this team and making sure that you enjoy them or that you vibe with them or like what they do. And that doesn't sound like a team to me. That just sounds like a load of people all shouting and screaming at once. Imagine being on a basketball team, but hating every other person
person on the team, it doesn't make for a good team environment. And look, I again, I'm not saying that everybody involved or everybody who gets pulled into these communities are sinister or are bad people. Absolutely not. But what I'm saying is, unfortunately, these communities kind of by proxy foster this attitude and this behavior of kind of creating this follow for follow or support for support loop. And there, look, and there is people in these communities who probably do well out of them, right? Somebody who's has an innate ability as, as a streamer or as an entertainer, and some people will check them out and they're really good at what they do. And yeah, they probably do grow a little bit, but that person would probably probably have grown just as quickly on their own or been recognized on their own. I would argue that this community offered them no initial Kickstarter benefit simply because there's hundreds of people in it. But the sad reality of Twitch is there are so many more people on the platform who never make it and who desperately want to make it. They are desperate, like they're desperate to do anything. Like me, like I'm, I'll do what it takes. I'll work the hours I need to work. I'll do what it takes to get myself to where I, I, I wanna be. However, I'm lucky enough to kind of have been around long enough to maybe have figured out a lot of this stuff but a lot of people haven't and they go all in on twitch and they'll do whatever they feel is necessary to get them ahead of the curve but the main issue with these and where it becomes so <laughs> up to me is that the person on the top knows this information they're not idiots the person on the top knows that smaller streamers or people who are new to the platform will do anything and they manipulate and they exploit these people down at the bottom to further their own agenda because they know that these people want their attention and they know to to get their attention, that they'll gift the subs, they'll they'll cheer the bits, they'll give the donos, they'll recruit people into the team for them, they'll they'll do whatever they have to do to stand out. And I guarantee you, the people who run these communities, they fully understand that. They absolutely do, and they are purposely feeding lies to these people down below, offering them the chance at growth, offering them what they have, and they know that they cannot give that to everybody. It's disgusting behavior. It's exploitive, exploitative, exploitative, exploitive. It's exploitative people and it's not fair and it has to stop and the only way we are going to do that is by identifying these communities and keeping them at arm's length trust me i've just scratched the surface but in the interest of time i want to talk about how you identify these communities now what to look out for and how to know if you might already be a part of one so if you are approached by one of these teams or somebody from one of these teams and they offer you to join, first thing you wanna ask is who runs this team? Who's the owner? Who's the person at the top? You wanna look into them, watch their streams, watch their content, get a sense of who they are as a creator. Do you share values with this person? Do you relate to this person? Do you like their content or do you like their numbers? Do you think the people in their chat would enjoy what you do? Do you think that your viewers would enjoy their content? Because realistically, in my opinion, the only really benefit that teams will add in terms of growth is that if it is a group of people who are like-minded, who are into the same things, who maybe play similar games or have a similar creation style or a similar vibe or similar humor. Again, me as a variety streamer, probably not gonna join a competitive CSGO group. So find out who's on top and do the research on them. Second thing is find out if there are requirements to join the team. For example, do you need to be subbed to somebody at a certain tier, tier two or tier three? Yes, that is a real thing. I know about it because I was suckered into one that way. And I subbed to that person at tier two simply just so I could join their stream team as they were promising that everyone in the stream team would get raided by them at some point. Never happened. So yeah, are there requirements? Do you have to sub to somebody? Do you have to send them a certain amount of bits? Do you have to watch their stream for a certain amount of hours? These are all tactics I've seen employed by stream team owners to get you in there. And the thinking behind these requirements is like, as a new streamer, maybe you've got a part-time job or a full-time job and you're thinking in your head, wow, I could potentially get raided with three or 400 people if all I do is pay $9.99 to get this person to raid me. In your head, you're like, that's a bargain. That's awesome. They're promising they're gonna do it. But if there's hundreds of people in the stream team, they couldn't possibly do it. You know, if there's like 600 people in it, you could stream every day for a year and the chances aren't even 50-50 that you would be raided by this person. But it seems attractive to that person at that price point. They're like, all I have to do is pay this amount of money and I could get this raid. But here's the catch. There could be 50 other streamers that week or even that day who thought the same thing and all gave this person at the top their money to do it. Similarly, if you are required to watch them for a certain number of hours, this person just is getting a load of new viewers who are watching them for hours at a time, again, on the promise of a raid. So what is the brand new impressionable streamer gonna do when they're trying to join this stream team? They've been watching for hours and hours and hours. They've only got a couple of hours left on their watch time. They think they're gonna get into this community, possibly get that massive raid. What are they going to do to get the attention of that big streamer at the top, to get their name fresh in their mind so that when they end their stream, 
stream. They are looking for someone to raid. Whose name's gonna be fresh in their mind? The person who donates to them. And they do it. They'll cheer the bits. They'll gift the subs. They'll do all those things to get their name fresh in that person's mind because they want the viewers. They don't give two sh** about anything else in this team or in this community, in this family. They just want the views and the raids. You might call me crazy, but I've seen it done. Furthermore, I've seen it work, hence setting a precedent to everyone else who wants to join, and I've done it. I was an idiot when I first started streaming. You know, I'm pretty vocal about this. I still am an idiot, but just a little bit less of one. <laughs> So now that I've outlined that for you, if you start to notice this behavior in your current stream team and the person at the top is not just gaining hours of watch time, loads of new viewers, loads of new followers, they're also gaining a load of load of bits and subs and essentially money for all these people in the community just trying to get their attention, you gotta get out of there. That's someone at the top who's just raking it in off, again, the exploitation all these people below them. Next is, what is the philosophy of the team? Is the philosophy of the team, hey, we're a group of gamers, we all enjoy XYZ thing or XYZ game, or we're all friends, we wanna just have a great vibe together, chill and play games, we're all like-minded creators who do similar things. That seems pretty cool, that's a nice philosophy in my eyes. Or is the philosophy more centered around, we are a group of small streamers and we must grow together and support one another on our journey. Again, the buzzwords being journey, community, grow, strength, achieve goals, like all of these things. If that's the message that's being rammed down your throat 90% of the time, it is nonsense. If all of the attention on this community is all centered around growing as creators and getting bigger and becoming bigger, and there's no actual care about who you are or what the f you're doing, it seems like a pretty bad philosophy to me. So yeah, look into the team, look into what they're pushing, their message, their idea, if it's just a couple of people who are just hanging out and there to enjoy each other's company and play games with one another and, you know, support each other in a way that has no other kind of incentive or requirements, looking pretty good to me. But if you start seeing the words, the buzzwords thrown in that we've mentioned before, you want to, I think, turn around and hightail it out of there. And the final red flag is, are there sort of monetary or kind of prize-based incentives? Namely like, oh, okay, guys, we're gonna do a giveaway this month to the person who recruits the most people or gets the most people to join. Is there some sort of benefit for you financially supporting the people at the top? Namely, I've seen it before, like, oh, if you cheer an X amount of bits that month, you get bumped up the list of potential people who are gonna get raided, or, you know, you might get entered twice into a giveaway if if you've gifted subs or all these kind of things. If there's things like that, that are like giveaway based or, you know, prize based for your participation in getting more people involved in the team, that is a massive red flag and you need to rethink you being there. Like, don't get me wrong. I like to do giveaways from time to time. I've given away stuff on my stream before. However, there shouldn't be kind of an incentive there or of to like, oh, well, I'll only give you X, Y, Z away if you, you know, get people to come watch my stream. That shouldn't work like that. Giveaway should, you know, be a giveaway. Giveaway. I mean, maybe you could argue like if people are doing subathons and there's like giveaways if they reach a certain amount of things that it could be similar. I don't necessarily think that's that bad. But a lot of the time when you're a streamer and you do giveaways, there shouldn't be any sort of like, it should be completely one-sided. It should be me giving you a prize or the streamer giving you a prize simply for your participation in their stream, not any sort of requirements to donate or cheer bits or whatever. So, and just an extra tip, everybody, if you are a creator and you are running a giveaway, hear me now. Make sure you have the item you're giving away in your hands or 100% the means to provide the item to the winner. Do not promise to give away something that you do not have or 100% have. Even if you think, oh, I'm getting paid next month from my other job and I'll be able to buy the thing. No, what if XYZ random scenario prevents you from getting your money on time or prevents you getting that thing on time? Do not do a giveaway unless you can guarantee the prize 10,000%. Good. Anything around money or giveaways or prizes and stuff like that uh, that have requirements or kind of extra little things along with them, complete red flag. So yeah, look, I wanted to touch on all that today. Uh, and look, no hate. I understand that, you know, navigating the small streamer space is incredibly confusing at times, incredibly difficult at times. Me, myself, as, as still a small streamer, I'm still doing it. But I do understand that, you know, people in their quest for growth and greatness on the platform sometimes do kind of silly things that they may not realize is being silly or they might get rose-tinted glasses about a, a certain opportunity that might look too good to be through. So if you see something on Twitch that seems too good to be true, you know the rest of this one. Okay, fine. It's probably too good to be true. 
So look, stay safe out there. Look after yourselves. Don't let some moron exploit you or manipulate you with the promise of, of getting you to where you want to be faster. Unfortunately, you can't speed run this stuff. Sometimes people grow really quickly on the platform. Other times people, it takes a slower burn. It's just, it's slower for them. That's just the way it is, you know? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. These kind of easy options, they're never the easy option. They're always more harmful down the line. They almost always get exposed and you don't want to be associated with that going forward. Just don't let anyone put you in that position and profit off you and profit off your ambitions. And look, I think is I know this stuff is really hard to identify. So if you are, you know, think you are in one of these uh, groups or you think you are about to join one of these groups, email me. Put the subject as, is this a scam? And I will be more than happy to look at it for you and let you know my advice or my opinion on it and, and let you know what I think. I'm sick and tired of these people taking advantage of people who just want to do nothing but grow on Twitch. So if you are suspicious of something that's been offered to you, send me an email, put in the subject line, is this a scam? I'll take a look at it and I'll get back to you. I normally like to keep my emails clear of things that just aren't business, but you know, if you think that this is the case and you're not sure, please reach out to me. I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. And uh, like, let's just try put an end to this, this nonsense. But everybody, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. Bit of a rant from old Dan today. You know, it is what it is. This, it just gets, it gets, it gets, my, it gets me going, all right? But everyone, I just want to say a huge thank you again for 10,000 subscribers on the channel. It's just so mind-blowing to me. I know anyone who follows me on social media knows that I haven't shut up for a while about it. So, sorry, but I'm just very thankful and it's amazing. And I just, I can't wait to see where the channel goes uh, from now on. So, thank you so much for that. And lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe if you're new here. If you enjoyed the videos, we post new streaming advice videos every week. And if you would really like to support the channel, uh, you can check out the join button below. Become a channel member. It's a great way to support the channel and there's lots of different affordable options, all that good stuff. So thank you to all my members this month. New video next week. And if you missed it, here's a video about everything that a full-time streamer does in a day. Really enjoyed making that video. Go check it out. Peace out, everybody. Much love. See you next week. Bye-bye.